developers say the darndest things. So I'm going to react to some of the most interesting comments I've gotten on JavaScript web development related videos in the last couple of days. What's up, everyone? My name is James Hewitt, and I do weekly videos on web development related topics. And if you're looking for a hands on coding tutorial, this is not the video for you. But we're going to do kind of a reflection or a reaction to some interesting comments that some of which are funny, some of them are just good conversations on uh, videos that I've published recently. So a lot of these are coming from a video that I did on JavaScript trends in 2023. And the first one on a positive note is from web dev rab saying that they just finished their first full year as a professional web developer. And now I'm spending a lot more time of my free time filling in gaps on the front end and starting to learn about the back end. And I think What's interesting about this, and this is where people kind of diverge, like this is the great thing about the ecosystem and this is the terrible thing about the ecosystem, is that it moves so fast, you're constantly having to learn new things. So people that really enjoy learning, that's a good thing, I'm in that boat. I love learning new things, creating new content for you all to learn about those things as well, but can also be really overwhelming. So you see the comment here of, after a year, they feel like they finally kind of have their bearings enough to go out and try to learn more. And you see this a lot with people with new jobs, when you get your new job or your first job, you're really focused on just what you're doing there until you get a level of comfort where now you can start to explore a little bit. Anyways, I thought that was a cool one because it's very exemplary of how the ecosystem is now of how much stuff there is to learn. You'll see a couple more comments related to that in a second. Now, the next one is from Aaron, who said, when I talked about JavaScript trends in 2023, Aaron said, just more crap employers can require five years minimum experience for on their job description. We've seen this like a lot, I think. Probably people have seen the memes of like looking for 15 years of React experience when React is like 10 years old, looking for five years of SvelteKit experience when SvelteKit is like two years old, et cetera. You see those things get messed up all the time on job applications and you hear those questions get asked in interviews. There's one really famous one, I'll see if I can find this and throw it up here, of someone uh, being looking for X number of years of experience in something specific. And that person is like, yeah, I don't have that many years of experience in that topic because I'm the one that created it less than that many years ago. So I thought this one was pretty funny of just like playing into like, we create all these new technologies so that they can put them on job descriptions and require more years of experience in this thing than it's actually been, been around. So now a really, really cool one is from Mickey S wondering if chat GPT and GitHub Copilot become more popular, eventually will there be less and less jobs? Now, what I said in this video was, I think developers will write less JavaScript, partially because AI things like ChatGPT and GitHub Copilot will continue to grow. So they will take care of writing some of the code for us. And understandably, a lot of people are really nervous to think about what does the future look like? Does this replace my job? Does it take my job? Does it replace other jobs? And I think the answer is, I don't really think it takes jobs away. I think it does one of two things. I think it enables you to do your job. So somebody probably still is going to be like, even if you use those tools, you're going to have to approve the code that it writes and make sure that it works and understand what it does so that you can understand your system as a whole. So I think it'll write that code for you. I think it has the potential to do that, but also maybe not remove jobs, but kind of change jobs. So if you think about AI tools being able to fill in a void of certain amounts of code that enables us as developers to go and do more other things. I don't know what that is. I'm not that much of a visionary, but I think there's the potential for there to be a shift in what these jobs actually look like. But I don't think that means that there will be less and less jobs. I don't think AI is replacing developer jobs anytime soon. Uh, so that's just my personal take. If you have other opinions, uh, I'd love to hear like what you think the impact of AI in terms of code will be in programming jobs. Let me know in the comments below. Now, I had someone comment because um, I was talking about the trend of shipping less JavaScript to the browser. And they commented, am I doing something wrong if I send JavaScript code to the browser in a web application? And I said, not necessarily. The general idea is to, to do as little of that as possible. This doesn't mean none. It just means being selective about when, how and why. And the person actually came back and commented basically, well, I've I've been doing this and I send tons of JavaScript to the browser and I don't see any problem. And that's totally fine. Like if you don't see any performance negative implications in your applications, that's great. I think the reality is more and more frameworks and tools are going to start pushing you down this path of shipping less JavaScript, which I think is a good thing, especially when enabled by the framework. So I've talked a lot about one of my favorite frameworks, which is Astro. 
It's what I've rebuilt my personal site with. I love it. And it ships no JavaScript to the browser by default. Again, I could have built something in React and it would have sent all the React code to the browser. In this case, it sends no code to the browser, no JavaScript code. So I think just the difference of like these tools will help push you down this path of selectively adding JavaScript or not adding JavaScript. Now, then I have a really fun one where I did a short version of the five trends in web development 2023. And I got a comment that said, absolutely not. Thumbs down. I've asked the person if they have any more specific feedback. So I don't have anything else to go on. I just thought this was hilarious. And I think like, unfortunately, you have these types of voices programmers, developers online who just shoot things down, but don't give context. And I think they're really trying to start not productive conversations, or maybe it's meant to be productive. I don't really know. But I really laughed at this. And I, I'm really curious on the the thumbs down. Absolutely not. Like, what, what are we talking about here? So if you watch either the JavaScript Trends uh, full video or the short one, and you have ideas that you want to talk about, put those in the comments too. Another person commented when I talked about the growth of JavaScript meta frameworks, because we have more and more. We have Next.js, we have Remix, we have SvelteKit, we have Astro, we have all these frameworks. Next year or this year, 2023, those will continue to grow and we'll see more of these. And someone, Derek, commented, no, no more JS meta frameworks, please. Which again goes back to this idea of like the JavaScript ecosystem is overwhelming. It's almost impossible to tell someone where they should start considering there's so many things for them to learn. Start like vanilla JavaScript, but then what's your next step? You go to React and then you look at Next.js and Remix and you look at Svelte and you go to SvelteKit and all these other things. So it is overwhelming. I totally understand people's reactions to not want more meta frameworks. The reality is I think we will have more of them and the ones we do have will continue to grow in popularity and use. But I just thought this was a funny one of saying like, I've had enough with JavaScript frameworks. I've got plenty now, I don't need any more. Now here's a fun one. Someone recommended learning Go saying you'll love it and it's very easy to learn if you're proficient in TypeScript. Now this is really cool from Chris Hurst because I referenced the fact that a lot of JavaScript build tools are being built with languages other than JavaScript. They're being built with Rust and Go and other things, which are faster languages. And I've kind of asked the question, I'm curious what you think, is it time to learn another language than JavaScript? As these other languages grow, will they start to replace JavaScript in other areas? Right now it's build tools, but maybe they start to creep in in different areas. So recommendation from Chris to learn Go, which I think totally makes sense. That'd be a fun one to, to learn. And it would, if I were investing time in a new language, that would be one that I would go to as well. Now, I want to wrap this up with a comment from JC, which again, I feel like is very representative of the JavaScript ecosystem and the web development ecosystem. JC says, I hate web development. I applaud people who love to spend their entire day learning that next shiny framework or library, but that's not me. I appreciate web development and that it pays my bills, but I hate how fragmented the ecosystem has become. It doesn't feel like there's a set standard, but rather a choose your own adventure, which I feel like is a very great way to describe this. And that becomes a problem when companies ask for 18 plus tools for a single job posting. Uh, again, like this is true. The, the ecosystem is segmented. There's, there's way too many tools for anyone to know them all. Most companies, most developers don't have the luxury that I have of being able to create content on the latest and newest uh, frameworks as they come out or to try them out the way I do. Uh, so I totally understand this. I do think it is interesting when you look at people asking for experience in 18 plus tools for a single job posting, I think the takeaway of that is to never be fully tied to a framework. So what I mean is like, you don't want to build your brand and have yourself only be the so-and-so guy, which how you can tweak that is you can be like the, I understand frameworks guy or person or, or, or woman or whatever. You can translate knowledge from one framework to another. So what I try to focus on is not necessarily like deep diving into an individual one, but understanding the similarities across them so that if you interview me for a tool or platform or a framework that I've never used, I can at least do a little research and draw parallels from things that I have done. So I think that's actually really important. But again, love this comment. It's like, it's funny, but I think it's valuable because of the, the fear and the hesitation of how many different things there are and the state of the ecosystem and how it's hard to keep up. And that's the reality. Um, I am uh, enjoy being able to do all this stuff and create content on the latest and greatest. Anyway, a little bit different of a video. I thought it'd be kind of a fun conversation to call out some of these comments and respond to them and talk about them. If you have any additional thoughts on these, or if you have other questions that you'd like to talk about, throw them in the comments. I'd love to read them and, uh, and talk with you about that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.